briefly introduce you, even if almost everyone here uh, probably know you, uh, because Jonathan, uh, Jonathan Fine is now retired, but he was a former employee of Cambridge University Press and the Open University. He's a former chair of uh, UK TUG, this uh, TUG, and a former board member of the TUG. This year, UK TUG uh, was dissolved, and he will give a personal history about that. Ratan, the mic is yours. Sorry? The mic is yours now. Oh, thank you. Sorry. I'm, um, sorry, I had to change my seating. So, let me... Uh, uh, sorry. This is all flummoxed. T take, take your time. We are not in a, in a rush. Huh? Okay. Well, I'll just get myself a glass of water then. Sure. That's very quick. So this is a personal history of the UK Tech Users Group, which was sadly dissolved at the beginning of this year. And I've been a member of the UK Tech Users Group for almost from the beginning. Uh, I've got about 20 slides. Some of them are quite quick. So I'll go through at a bit of a pace. Um, and there'll be opportunities that will give more opportunities at the end. So. Let's just remember that we're all connected and birth and death are both separations and connections. You've probably seen this poem before. We'll see the rest of it later. So here's a picture of a tug meet, UK tug meeting about 10 years ago and it shows half the meeting. So there were six, 12 of us there approximately. We were in a small basement room in Trinity College, Oxford, and we had tea and biscuits and lunch. And um, it was, I thought, a pleasant occasion. I can't remember who was there exactly and what we were, what the agenda was, but there's a photo. Uh, if, if there are no photos, it didn't happen. So where are we now? Well, I'm going to give a long view, almost as long as astronomy, geology. But we live in a very peculiar time. We live in what's called the Anthropocene, which is where our species is changing the world in a geological manner. And I'll just highlight some features. We've got atmospheric CO2 and global heating. We had record breaking temperatures earlier this week that were most uncomfortable. And if they continued for a week, I don't know what I would have done. Uh, the geologists like stratigraphy. And in fact, stratigraphy was very important in coal mining. And the first geological map of England was made by William Smith, who was a surveyor who helped the discovery of coal in Somerset. And he had a, he's, his technique was to use stratigraphy and in fact, to use the presence of fossils in sandy strata. Now I mentioned that because one of the future geological markers of our present age, one, one thing that has been suggested is an abundance of chicken bones. Perhaps five million years from now, our successors will look at this abundance chicken bones and say, what made chicken such an abundant species? And why did all the megafauna die out? So that's the age we live in, in terms of geology. Now take, take a very short time frame: society and the digital revolution. So mobile phones are extraordinary. They're cheaper than books when you think about it because a mobile phone is a camera, it's a scanner, it's a tape recorder, it contains information, it's a radio set, and it makes phone calls. And it costs $120, $150, and it's equivalent to a number of books in terms of the information it makes available. Oh, it's a photo album as well. So some of the key features are digital networks, server and storage farms. I 
not using the word cloud deliberately, they're physical objects, virtual reality, machine learning, AI, data science, and for us, digital typography. And I think the really important thing about digital typography now, and um, and Pete, Peter Williams' talk yesterday highlighted the point when he mentioned pdf.js. Digital typography is what we and others do. And the others include web designers uh, and font developers, such as, um, my memory is slipping. Um, we'll come back to that later. So we're in a digital revolution and the time between 1978 when Don Knuth started working on tech and today is an enormous period in terms of the digital revolution, but we're in the middle of a successive change of the same nature. So we have to think about the 21st century in terms of what we do. And we have to, so to speak, take the view at all sorts of levels. So let's move on. I'm going to say a few words about myself. I've used tech since 1989. I spent a couple of thousand dollars to buy a PC with two megabytes of RAM, which allowed me to multitask. And it was a 10 megahertz machine. Uh, I also bought a laser printer at the time, and I bought that so that I could write mathematical papers. So I'm a retired LaTeX expert from the Open University. And what am I doing in my retirement? Well, math research, software, accessibility, personal growth. Now, I have a history. My parents were born about 100, and, 100 years ago. And to me, that's very important because the US Civil War, which seems to be enormously distant, and whoever here has met Abraham Lincoln, was 50 years ago when my parents were born. So my parents' birth is twice as close to the US Civil War than it is to me today. I find that amazing, even though the arithmetic is uncontestable. And the French Revolution was about 230 years ago. I've got about 17 to 20 years of life left. So I'm coming to the end, I suppose. And um, that's part of my personal relationship with the UK Tech Users Group. So I'm now gonna to switch to the UK Tech Users Group. And here are some highlights. It was founded in 1989 and dissolved in 2022. By the way, I joined TUG in 1990, and from that, in an article in TUG, I discovered the existence of the UK Tech Users Group, because I moved from the United States to the UK at about that time. And its membership, I think, peaked at about 220 and finished at about 80. And there's a long list there of prominent members. And some of them get a particular mention and some of them don't. Uh, so UK TUG has organized two TUG conferences, Aston in 1993 and Oxford in 2000. It's had two TUG presidents, that's Malcolm Clark and Carve Bazargan, and five LaTeX team members. If you're struggling to get the last one, it's Alan Jeffrey. Here are some more highlights. So, in 1988, the Aston CTAN node was created. That was before CTAN, it became CTAN. It became a CTAN node when the need for a network of archives was needed because uh, Aston was related to servers in the United States and Germany and perhaps elsewhere that were doing the same sort of thing. So, um, Peter Abbott set up, who was in IT at Aston, set up the archive and it probably had, oh, I don't know, 400 megabytes of data, I'm guessing there. I don't think it was gigabytes, it might have been. And Sebastian had a leading role or major role in the architecture of CTAN as it now is. 
Um, UK Tug took over the Tech FAQ from Bobby Bodheimer and Robin Fairburns was the key person there and it was published both web and PDF. David Carlyle and Chris Rowley did a lot of work on Latex 2E. I did a meeting on Tech, HTML and PDF in 1995, more on that later. Baskerville was produced, uh, edited and typeset by Sebastian. Uh, Tech Live was founded by Sebastian, and I remember that the UK Tech Users Group paid several hundred pounds for a CD burner, so you could burn a CD. Uh, from 2006 to 2010, I was chair and modestly was a key player in the revival of UK Tug. It was very much in the doldrums. And from about 2016 onwards, it was actually in a terminal decline, although I didn't recognize it at the time and I don't think others did. So let's move on, if we can. Uh, some of you may have seen this before and it's my best way of playing tribute to Sebastian, which is what Don Knuth wrote. And I'll give you a chance to read that yourselves. Okay, I'll move on now to a request for contributions. Uh, I didn't have enough time to do justice to Jonathan Q. I hope that there are amongst us some users of ZTech and TechWorks, and if there are, I'd be delighted if they could speak up and give give recognition to what Jonathan has done. And there's a survey of what he's done in this interview that Dave Walden did with Jonathan uh, um, a number of years ago. So I hope that there will be some contributions from the floor celebrating Jonathan Q and anybody else who was involved in the UK Tech Users Group. Here's a brief summary of my contributions. So the first thing is the Bridewell meeting, and I'll say more about that later. I did a lot of work with Robin Fairburns, who sadly deceased this year, on the Tech FAQ. And he and I were neighbours. It was sort of five minutes, ten minutes walk from my house to his. And I remember visiting him and... Uh, working through things with the FAQ and we both put a lot of energy into it and uh, my favorite contribution was a question for me was a question I wrote if tech's if tech's so good how come it's cheap free that was the FAQ question that I'm most pleased I contributed and I learned a lot from Robin and he was actually a great help with me with the Bridewell meeting um, I used to write for photocopy and snail mail Baskerville. That was how, in the 1990s, we distributed our journal. Robin produced masters on the uh, laser printer where he worked that was high resolution. I would paste them up into pairs and take them to a local shop to be, pho to be photocopied and stapled. And then I would send them out by email. Uh, subsequently, the Xerox DocuTech were taking a PDF. It was a thing about the size of a room. We were taking a PDF and it would turn it, each one laser printed, into a, a, a bound document. Um, as part of the revival of UK Tug, I organized a LaTeX training day with the London Math Society. The London Math Society is the national body, or at least the English body, is the national body for mathematics in the UK, it has some nice premises in the basement of their building in Bloomsbury uh, um, in London. And they cooperated with us for a LaTeX training day that was distributed, that was publicized through their network. And we had a lot of 
PhD students come to listen to, I think it was about five or six talks about different aspects of LaTeX. And I thought it was a great success. And it was then followed by an annual general meeting. Um, for a number of years afterwards, Joseph Rope Wright continued the tradition of training days, but they sort of gradually fell by the wayside. Uh, on Tugboat, there are three things that are particularly important, I think. The one is editable DVI files or visual tech. The second is tech as a callable function. And the third is uh, the Mathtran web service. Uh, the Mathtran web service is interesting because I got external into external funding from JISC in the UK and internal funding from the Open University to develop tech as a callable function. And it's defunct now, but I set up a website, Mathtran, that provided images of math images, of math formulas. They were so quickly generated that generating them was so cheap, they weren't worth caching. They would generate on the fly quicker than you get them from the disk. And that was quite widely used until MathJax took over. And MathJax is much better, I think, in that respect. Here's the Bridewell meeting. Uh, as you can see from the punch hole, this is an actual piece of paper that's been filed away. Um, and at the bottom, I say that software such as the World Wide Web and its browsers, Adobe's Acrobat and Novell's Envoy allow documents to be distributed and read without being printed. That was just how revolutionary that time was. We can publish documents without printing them. And this meeting took place in Fleet Street. In the basement of Fleet Street, there were print rooms that were enormous and you had steam powered or electrically powered presses that would print off a million copies of a newspaper, which were then sent by train all across the country. So that's how revolutionary this was. I was very, very pleased with that meeting. It was a tremendous success. I'll say a bit more about that. So it took place in 1995. It had a historic location. Next door to it was St. Bride's Church. I'll just go back. That's the wedding cake confection on the right-hand side of the poster. Uh, the poster was created using old-fashioned cut and paste. I photocopied the drawing of St. Bride's Church from an architecture book. Robin printed off the text that was on the left-hand side. Uh, we measured the one against the other so that everything fitted. And then the two were pasted together and photocopied. That's how that document was produced. And that's the old fashioned way. And I was using the same PC I had before, two megabytes of RAM and 40 megabyte hard disk. It made a surplus of several thousand pounds. The speakers was David Barron, who's a professor at Southampton who did uh, work on electronic information and digital documents. David Brailsford, who was, I think, secretary of the British Computer Society Electronic Publishing S Special Interest Group. Myself, who was trying to earn a living out of tech. Peter Flynn, who was at Cork University, who is still with us. Martin Keyes, who was Sebastian's manager at Elsevier. The, the enormous publisher, and, so, and Sebastian was crucial in getting Martin to come to this talk. Gita Granger, who was in charge of production for Wiley, and Mike Popham, who was uh, an information specialist uh, at Oxford University. In some sense, he was the predecessor of Sebastian's later role as a digital humanities and information architecture specialist at Oxford University. And that's an important role that's quite similar to the role that Peter Williams has with the American Astronomical Society. So we had a capacity audience of 120, but sadly the momentum was lost and perhaps 25 years on, it can be renewed. And I might say more about that at another time 
and another place. So the next 500 weeks, I'm expecting good health. I'm going to do my mathematics and I hope to be an elder and share experience with the tech community. There's the weekly tech how, which is a place to share. There's accessibility, which is our Achilles heel and portable documents is an idea of mine that addresses another weakness. Let's move on. Here's a list of interviews of all. Dave Walden has done a lot of interviews. Here are the interviews of the people that Dave Walden did who are associated with the British Isles, which allows me to include Peter Flynn, who's Irish. Here are people from another tug meeting, 1918 perhaps, there were one, two, three, four, five, six. There are 10 of us, that's not bad. 10 of us, not 120, but 10, it was something. Now, tech has a windfall, tug has a windfall of $5,000 from the dissolution to tug, of tug, of dissolution of UK tug, that's a typo. Tug has a windfall from the dissolution of UK tug. How to spend it is an agenda item for the tug AGM, which is four hours from there. And you can get in touch with me at 2358 various places. Finally, to finish, I let, Don, let John Bond Done. Finish. Any person's death diminishes me because I am involved in humanity. Therefore, never send to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. So at this point, I think I stop. And are there any questions stacked up and any contributions people wanting to give relating to the esteemed Jonathan Q? Perhaps I shall stop sharing. Does anybody want any slides shown again? People can raise their hand uh, to ask you a question or ask you to see some slides again. Okay, I'll stop sharing. I could start sharing again if you need to. Uh, Jeremy, over to you to drum up the audience or ask a question yourself. So please, audience, uh, ask questions. Um, Jason is the memory of uh, UK Tug, I think. So you can ask questions, even about things that he didn't put on his slides. Well, I just have a, a comment that is not relevant to um, UK Tug. Anthropocene is not an epoch, it's a crisis, just a crisis. It will last for a few uh, thousands of, year, of years. Humanity will disappear, but life will not. Huh? Life will continue. It's probably already continuing at some star within sight of the Hubble telescope, not the Hubble telescope, the Webb telescope. Even, um, on the like, Earth, even on the Earth, huh? uh, life will go on. Huh? Uh, just, uh, quite I, 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 th I think so, at least for um, a few billion years. Yes, like after the dinosaurs, uh, the dinosaurs disappeared, like we, human, like human will disappear uh, soon. Uh, but another, but another... it would be a great shame if we had a enormous conflagration equivalent to the burning of the Library of Alexandria. Okay, that was not related to uh, the topic of your talk. I really enjoy uh, having the story of uh, a few of, of uh, Tug in the UK. Uh, I, th I think also that now we can have meetings uh, across continents like we're having currently. So there is less, uh, less need for uh, small groups scattered around the planet. It's a really good thing that we can all gather through uh, Zoom and internet uh, and share our ideas uh, independently of our countries. I think, I think that's right. And the carbon footprint of Zoom meetings, video meetings, is rather less than air travel. The other side of it, of course, is that the mobile phone becomes a video 
recording and broadcasting platform. And so the need for print, which is a low bandwidth, a low bandwidth means of communication, is greatly reduced. So what will happen, what is happening is that a lot of quote print is being produced by Google through closed captions of videos. And perhaps what's going to be important in the future is to have good handwriting so that your stuff can be OCR and clear speech so that the instructions you give to the spy in the living room called Alexa can be heard well. The, there was a time in the 19th century when being able to sketch was really important. If you're a military officer, you had to sketch the disposition of the enemy forces. Everything has changed a lot. And unfortunately, we have difficulty keeping up with that change, particularly when we get older. Am I out of time? I think, oh no, we've got 15 minutes left. Yes, we have 15 minutes, so people can uh, chat, raise uh, their hand. Does anybody want to say anything about Jonathan Q? I'm sure somebody here uses and appreciates ZTech. And Jonathan Q wrote that. The picture you, you the, all the pictures that you show are personal pictures. Do you have them? Uh, are they available somewhere? Uh, the the photographs came from the UK Tub website, which has been archived. Mm -hmm. It was on WordPress. It's been archived. The archiving process failed to capture the photographs. However, um, I think they used wget and it was sort of a bit hidden behind JavaScript. However, uh, Joseph Wright, uh, who, who managed that website, has kindly given me the photos that I've needed to include in this talk. So, um, uh, a minus one for not archiving the photographs on the website and a plus one for at least ensuring they have a little bit of continued existence. Yes, I wanted to make sure that uh, they are not just uh, um, paper photographs in a drawer, uh, because that would be a pity. Uh, oh, the whole, the, whole, the whole position of archiving is now so different, isn't it? We have digital archives that somebody's going to turn off one day. Is that true that uh, we now happen to lose things? Uh, more easily than previously. Uh, you have websites, you rely on websites to um, stay available for uh, centuries, but when the maintainer uh, just move on to some another interest, um, he switches off the server and you lose content. Hmm. DNA provides a good archive. Yes. My, 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 my family history is recorded in my DNA. <laughs> And it's uh, actually quite important for criminal investigations. You, you, they, could, they can track down now, they just crack unsolved cases using DNA. It happens, I read about it every so often. So, yes, but you lost half of uh, each of your parents huh, during the process. Huh? Sorry? You're, you're archiving the DNA of your parents, but you only kept uh, half of each of your parents. That's right. <laughs> That's right. You lost some genes, huh? <laughs> well, it's a lossy conversion, isn't it? <laughs> well, I thank you all for attending. I'm actually a bit disappointed that uh, a society that has in the past contributed so much to the tech community and 
brought to rise people such as Robin Fairburns and Sebastian Rads has disappeared. And I'm also sort of, and Jonathan Q, he's, he's also one of the great figures. And I'm sort of disappointed that there's so little response to my talk, actually. That, that is a disappointment to me. You know that we, the, the, UK, the UK FAQ is really useful still. Uh, and uh, we are translating it to French huh? uh, as, a, as a wiki. Sorry, say that again? The FAQ that you, Robin and you uh, wrote, you contributed a lot on, we are translating, translating it to French huh? on a wiki. Well, I don't know what the continuation will be. Um, I've sort of gone much more international with the Tech Hour. I thought the Tech Hour, which is a video online meeting, would be a UK online replacement for the UK Tech Users Group. But it turns out it's two major things are international, particularly North America, and accessibility. And the, the biggest meeting ever we had on the Tech Hour, about 25 people, was an accessibility meeting. And unfortunately, I didn't have the, so to speak, resources to do anything with that. Uh, but accessibility seems to be working well in terms of what the tech hour does. It seems to be making a sort of contribution that people are finding valuable. Okay, I think you will speak more about uh, accessibility tomorrow. Yeah. Second talk, huh? Okay, my, my last word is do come to the talk general meeting, it's important for all sorts of reasons. And that's in just over four hours from now. So I'll say goodbye and thank you for all for attending. You have, you have a comment uh, by- uh, Thanks to the organizers for making this conference possible and all the sponsors. And thanks to Jeremy for chairing me and introducing me. You're welcome, Nathan, see you tomorrow. You have a comment in the q and if you want. Oh, I've got a comment. You can read it on. Sorry. Uh... No, I don't see a comment. Oh, sorry. Q and A. Yes. Uh, thanks, Tristan. Oh yeah, it's really nice to hear from you, Tristan. Uh, drop me an email if you would, it'd be great. Thank you, Ite, as well. So I think we close now.